I'm back today with a tutorial on the Lawn Fawn Magic Iris dye. This is a brilliant dye with lots of uses and it just works so well. I'm so impressed with it. So we're going to go over how to use it, how to build it, some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way, and a couple of fun card inspirations. Everything that I used will be linked in the description below. Please take the time to subscribe if you have the chance. I got my inspiration from Megan Quinn, and I'm making these dog houses because my sister has a dog that's very sick, and she wanted to give some thank you notes to the vets. So, of course, I had to make these. And I wanted them to be something the vets could display in their office, just as a fun reminder of her dog. So let's get started with my first tip, which is to color the inside edges of the pieces of this magic iris. You could also do something like use colored cardstock, but this is the only area that really shows at times, and so you want to make it something that's going to match that. I do end up using colored cardstocks for the little sausages that I cut out. They kind of become the shutter doors. But this area sometimes will peek out of your card and it just makes a much more streamlined look if you give that some color. And I hate to waste a whole sheet of colored cardstock on that. So I can easily do this with Distress Oxides and be done. So here it is up close, these three pieces that I did. And then this is the color of the shutters. I call it the sausage piece that matches. So this next section, I have pre-die cut everything that I need, and I wanted to go over what you need. You need three rings. You'll notice those are the ones that I colored the inside of. Three of your shutters, which people call sausages. Three of these tabs, and at least one of the rounded tab. I usually end up using two. I went on and cut out the birdhouse, too, just to kind of look at what it would be like over this center part. So we'll work on assembling this, but if you don't know how to die cut or just need some assistance, I do have a video and I'll pop that up right here. The first thing that you do is to get these sausages in this um, area. You want to make sure you're lining those sausages up with the metal. So my tip number two is to use binder clips. I think I saw Jennifer McGuire do this and it just makes it so much easier because they want to flop around. They're not held down with anything except their little tab at the back. And when you're putting them in, you really want to make sure you got that tab all the way to the back and you've got it lined up because think this is going to be your cover and your shutter that's falling down. So I usually do three binder clips, get them lined up exactly like I want them and clip them on there. So here's what it looks like with all three of these clipped here. And now it's time to start figuring out how to glue other parts of this together. So I want to show you these glue dots. You need to make sure you get 3 16th of an inch. That's mini dots. Some other may be named differently than that. So just make sure you check the size. And I have the roll. So my tip number three is to tear off the glue dots. There are some that come in tear sheets, but I have tried using tweezers. I've tried using my um, little picker tool to get this off and put it on. And nothing works works as well as just using the sheet, really applying some pressure, and then peeling this plastic back. So these dots only go on the X's and they've conveniently marked those X's for you. It is very important that you get it lined up with that X and don't do any other glue on this panel. That's so that these can move and you'll see how it all comes together at the end. But trust me, just over the X's is where you want your glue dots. Now it's time to stick one of these rings on top of these glue dots. I usually only undo one clip to start so that I've got it lined up and I can get that one taken care of. Then I slowly remove my other clips and press those glue dots down into this. That really does a good job of keeping it all lined up, which makes a huge difference. Now it's time to flip over the ring and start applying these tabs. So you will see that there are markings for where these tabs go. And you'll also notice that you only put your glue dots or whatever you're going to use. I used a tape runner because I feel like that's easy. Only on half of it. And I'm extra careful on that because you don't want any adhesive close to that edge because it's going to have to move. So you line these up perfectly, get their glue um, strips or whatever you're using. I would suggest not ever using liquid glue on this mechanism. Next we're going to flip this over 
and this is how we add our little curved tab. That curved tab is what is going to be moving your ring. So it's the same thing where you only do the adhesive on the bottom half and you want to line it up very carefully on the edge. The other thing that might be nice is to add a little bit of your um, ink blending on this thing because you may be able to see the white on it in some cards. I didn't worry about it on this step, but you're making a V right here perfectly with one of those bottom lines and then we're going to attach another ring. This ring has no adhesive on the ring. All you're doing is putting adhesive on the edges of your straight tabs and folding them over. You'll see that I used a clip to hold this down and then I'm doing my adhesive. You don't want to go all the way to that edge that's going to fold over. So leave a little space right here from your adhesive and just do it on this little outer edge. You're going to gently fold and here's what I do. You don't want that to go all the way to the center. So you fold it down and then I smoosh it out towards the outside edge. This way I'm leaving a little bit of a gap because you want all of these parts to move. So I'll show you one more time on that, just putting a little bit of adhesive here, folding it not all the way to the edge, and then pushing backwards. So once these are folded over, you've got your mechanism, and you definitely want to try it out, make sure it closes all the way, make sure it's not getting stuck anywhere, and also just moving it, I think, kind of loosens it up so that you make sure that it's easy for the person who gets the card. So if you made it this far, congrats, you've got a magic iris. Now we're gonna build the card. I'm gonna speed up my background building, but I did wanna point out a couple of things. One, I love this cloudy stencil by Lawn Fawn. If you don't have it or you don't have a cloud stencil, it, it makes great backgrounds, so easy, and just looks like you spent a ton of time doing them. Stencils are awesome because they have a great price point. This one I think is $6.99, not too bad. So I worked on building this up and then we're gonna add some extra dimension to it. Here's that background panel. Now we're gonna add some depth to it by using some acrylic white paint for splatters and using the Distressed Oxide Salty Ocean. I think this white paint does such a good job at bringing in some highlights and interest to your back. I have tried many other whites, I've tried white watercolor. I've tried some different things and this just gives such great dimension that if you haven't tried it or you have access to some acrylic paint, try it out with a little bit of water added to it and see what you think. I'll show you a close-up of the card with this background so you can see what I'm talking about with those highlights. Next we're going to build the house and you'll see this piece right here makes boards that I use. So I cut out a lot of those in gray cardstock and then I'm going to add some black soot distress oxide with my tiny little eye crafter brushes to the edges. This part does not have to be done but it definitely gives your project more dimension and it just makes it look so real like it was built with some aged boards that I have to do it on all of mine. This next part, I'm gonna line these boards up and build my doghouse. So I've been using this Honey Bee Creative Glue. It's a bigger tube than Gina K, but it's a similar glue in that it moves around and allows you to place things and you have a little bit of time before that adheres, which is nice when you're doing something that needs to be level. You could definitely use some type of level or something to help you out with this, but it has a line on the bottom there that I went along with my longer piece. And I felt like as long as I lined that up and kept everything pushed together and lined up, it was staying um, very level. So I just worked with that. The other tip I have on this is to make sure you apply glue to the entire area that needs to be stuck down. Cause when you're gonna run this through a die cutting machine, once it's dry and if those pieces are not perfectly attached to where you want them to, they're just gonna fall off and you're gonna have to rebuild your scene again. It looks a little odd all put together, but I'll show you when I did my red house how I line this up. You can flip it over and see your pattern. So I just lined all of my edges up so carefully and I'm gonna tape this down to this mat to make sure that it stays there because if you are off on that cut, that's a lot of wasted time. You can also use your grids down here just to make sure you've got everything level when you're taping. So here's what it looks like when it comes out of the Gemini die cut machine. 
you'll see that it looks like it's attached, but since you've done a good job gluing, when you flip it over, you can just kind of unattach all those little pieces and look how cute that is. Oh my goodness, it just, it just kills me. It's so cute. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I glue this down. When I'm doing it, I always start with the front panel and get everything glued to the front panel first because if you go on and put your magic iris behind this, it's uneven. It's not the full sheet. So a lot of times it's a little harder to get things lined up. So I would start out by gluing down everything that you want on the front of the scene. And then I'll show you how we put together the magic iris. So to put the magic iris on, you'll see where my arrow is pointing right there. The other side of that, you're just going to put some tape runner on those and stick them down. You have to line up carefully. And then the back part of the panel, you want to pop it up with some foam tape. I'm using scrapbook.com's foam tape. And I do two layers because you'll see this is a tall card. So you really need two layers of this to make it even and pop up like it should. So you need something that's going to be on the inside when they open that up. I'm going to use a sentiment from the Magic Messages um, thing that fits perfectly in this. So what I did is traced in pencil so that I make sure I get this inside my circle and lined up. And then I'm going to use this gray cardstock as the back of my card so that when you open up that iris, you'll see the thank you very much. With all our bright white highlights on the background, I wanted to make sure this was as bright a white embossing as I could get. And I'm really loving the WOW super bright ultra fine embossing powder. It just looks amazing on this gray. And really, it's just such a bright white that it um, really stands out. I ended up making four of these and one extra detail is that I put the dog's name on some of the bowls. I thought that would be a cute reminder of her dog. So I hope you enjoyed this and stuck with me through the end of the video. Links will be in the description. Please click through those if you're interested in any of those products. They do give me a little bit of a commission, which helps me support this channel. Thanks so much, guys. Until next time, I'll see you then.